Hi, welcome to the next episode of our podcast here. I'm here with Debbie Lucci from William Ravis Real Estate. I'm Matt Witte. We both work in the Andover office. Uh, I can't tell you which podcast this is, which number, because we're just cranking them out. Um, but I am pretty excited about today's topic. Debbie, want to let us uh, let us in what we're talking about today? It's we're going to talk about the pros and cons of real estate teams. So oh, I love this. I love this, this idea. Is, I, this is one of my favorite subjects because I, I happen to be a very, very big believer in real estate teams. Um, I operated as a single agent. Uh, I started in 1998. When when did we merge with Ravis? Probably about eight years ago. So I've been doing this 26 years. So I was pretty much a solo agent on my own from the very beginning with Prudential, How and Doherty. And then we get bought out by Ravis. So Prudential didn't really want to do teams and I can understand why you know it, it you know you would think that you know that like if a, a team leader might compete against um, the the office for agents and things like that and you know uh, you know the team leader is typically at a higher split and what happens is you know the, the agents get paid the difference between what they get paid and what the team leader gets paid so you know it seems like the office would make less but so I mean, what do you think, all right, from, if you take it from a customer's point of view, okay, what do you think that maybe the pros and cons are? Yeah, so I would say if I, let's say I was selling my house and I met you or I met one of your team members, I guess one of my questions would be, who am I interacting with? I see that you have a team of, you know, 10 people or 12 people, you know, do, do, are they all involved or... Uh, and it, is it, you know, one agent that's marketing? How would that work? So um, what I typically do is I try to align a team member with the seller or buyer that I think would be a good fit. Okay. And then what happened is that customer would have contact with that agent. But what the advantage I think of a team is, is that we all collaborate on ideas, okay? Like, you know, for example, I, you know, everybody has strengths and weaknesses, so we try to work off everybody's different strengths. So that agent, that individual agent would go out and work with that buyer or that seller, and what would happen is they would get all the admin support that, that we have. Like, so we have a, a full-time um, inside sales agent that makes between 80 and 100 calls a day. Um, we have... Um, we have uh, Christine Cleary, who's um, our manager. Um, you know, she's like my right arm, um, and she's fabulous. So she keeps track of all the stuff behind. Like if you ask me to do Canva and you know make postcards and have any type of artistic ability, like for example, I found her that she's better with billboards than some of the billboard people. So <laughs> uh, she, you know, she is. She's amazing. So you know, there's an exposure that I don't think you're going to get as an individual agent that you can get as um, um, working on a team. And then we have Adam, who's great with uh, tech, social media, also great with training, things like that. So that, you know, all that that agent has to do is just focus on that listing. And then a lot of stuff behind the scenes is taken care of. So like, for example, yesterday, okay, I have the house in Beverly that just hit the market. Um, we had, I had 30 offers on that property. I handled that pr property myself. It was an old client of mine. Microsoft Office was going down. We had 30 offers, offers coming in. Now, if, you know, if as a single agent, you know, if you want me to flip your signs and post your social media and, you know, do all these other type of things, there's no way I could just focus on 30 offers. It took me actually all day to do because between, you know, phone calls and offers coming in and Microsoft Office going down, uh, there's no way I could handle that as an individual agent. So, um, I, you know, I, I feel it's a huge strength for a seller or a buyer to have to have a team behind them of people that do what they do best. That's what yeah. I, how I feel. Yeah, that makes total sense. And when you hear all the things the team concept can do. If you remember being a single agent, it was all on you. So that means the marketing dollars you would spend, which, by the way, usually isn't much because you just don't have, you know, the revenue coming in like the team does. And at the time, you might think it's a good, solid marketing plan. But when you compare it to where you are now, how much better is your marketing now than when, you know, 20 something years ago when you were a single agent? Oh, 
I mean, I was, spe- I, you know, as a, a, a team lead, I, I'm spending like $200,000 a year on just advertising and getting people's house, houses out there and, and also admin support and, and, and things like that easy, you know, if not more. But as a single agent, I mean, I couldn't really afford to do that. So, and also what I love about that is our advertising has changed a lot since, uh, you know, we, we have Joanne D who used to work for North Shore Magazine and she has a very clear, you know, vision of what marketing should look like and a very classy vision. So, you know, I think, you know, when I first started advertising, it was a little bit kind of, uh, much more dated, a little bit more almost cartoonish when I look back at it now. Uh, when she, it's with her, it's very clean, very smooth, very crisp advertising. So we, we you know, we take Joanne, but, you know, besides the fact she's a fabulous agent, we also take her, you know, where she used to work for North Shore and, you know, she's just got that certain touch with certain things. Now, you know, I, I'm, I'm from a retail background. Mm-hmm. So, you know, when I look at things, I look at, okay, I'm going to spend this much marketing dollars on these things. What's the return on investment? Uh, things like that. Um, but, you know, if you want me to put a, a, an advertising page together, it, it's not going to be me. I can tell you kind of what I want it to look like. But between Joanne and Christine, they put it together. And, you know, so I think that's a big strength from a seller's and a buyer's point of view is um, the agents are <clears> – <throat> they focus on what they can do best for the clients. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, I mean, if, if you want me to send over paperwork to get signed, it'll probably take me 15, 20 minutes to do it. Christine will be done in like five minutes and get it over to you. So it's just using, I think, different people's strengths to really make it uh, seamless. Yeah, that's a good way to describe it, right? Because you have all these different personalities on the team. And I know for me, this was really hard. Um, I have 16 members now and, a, and an admin and like you and ISA, I would want to try to do everything. Like I would try to get into Canva and, and say, okay, let me try to make this flyer. But I realized what a colossal waste of my time oh, yeah. when my admin is 500 times better at it. Yep. And you just know when your strengths, you know, like you described Joanne D's strengths and, and you kind of have to take a step back and say, that's her thing. She knows how to do this and let her run with it. Yeah, and you know what I love too is I really love the different ages of the team members. Um, so you know, if you get somebody my age, you 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 market a certain way to them, and then I listen to the very young team members and I listen to their ideas. And I'm like, okay, that's totally different. So you know, if you've got a seller who's my age, you're not going to have a seller who's the same age probably buying that property. It's going to be mm-hmm. somebody very young. So if I look at let's say like you know like Leah. Uh, who's who's the youngest out of the group, and I kind of watch the way she looks at things. I'm like, okay, she's probably the buyer of the property. How is she looking at things? And I, you know, you 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 mark it in that direction. So that's that's what I love about it. I I just felt like when I was a single team member, because people will say a lot of times, you know, are we getting you, and I'm like, I mean, I'm always there. I'm always behind the scenes. You know, everything is always there. Um, but you can't work eight days a week flipping signs, loading listing sheets, putting lock boxes on, put posting open houses, doing social media, you know, meeting the photographer, meeting the stager, you know, negotiating offers, taking out buyers. It, it's almost impossible to do. So I really enjoyed the team concept where, um, you know, I, I am very fussy, kind of who I, you know, work with because I, I you know, I, um, we just hired this new admin and it was really nice to hear her say, you know, these girls all work. And I'm like, yeah, they do work. And it was nice to kind of hear that from her because she, she worked with another office before. And um, she said to some people, you know, geez, you know, you're working for all women now, this one guy, and they were all women. And, you know, was there were a lot of, I, I think people thought we were like selling sunset or something. <laughs> like that, you know? I, I don't think so. No, no, we're, we're, we're there to do business. So yeah. she was, uh, it was very nice to hear her say that she really enjoyed working with us and all the girls really work very hard. And uh, so that was nice. So um, it's just, I enjoy, I think, especially as I, you know, uh, get older in my career, that uh, the collaboration of ideas that everybody brings to the table 
to really uh, make it the best transaction for the sellers and the buyers. I, and, and I really, I really enjoy that, you know, because yeah. you can't I've, think of everything. No, you can't. And, and I enjoy like even the phone calls that I have when, you know, whatever team member it is calls and says, here, here's the situation. And it's not that they don't know what to do. They just want to collaborate and say, listen, this is the situation. Have you had any experience with this? And we collaborate that way. So we're not making emotional decisions that in turn could be irrational. Right. So what we do is what I try to do now is we have uh, what's called whatever Wednesday. I have a meeting with all the uh, agents, whoever wants to come. And usually it's, it's pretty amazing that mostly all show up. It's not mandatory. So it's kind of a, a really nice compliment that they come. And what I uh, typically do is open it up to them. You know, what do you have for questions for the week? And as they get more experience, there's less and less questions. So what I do is like when an agent will call me and ask me a question, I put it on my notes on the phone and we open it up for whatever Wednesday. All right, so this is what happened this week. What do you think about this? And a lot of it's not black and white. You know, a lot of it is, you know, just you know, you get a lot of personalities involved in a transaction. You know, what would you do if this happened to you? And we kind of talk about it. So yeah, that's kind of cool. That is cool. And it, and it, it must be going well, because I can tell you agents, when they hear the word volunteer, may, may not want to go if they don't feel the values there. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I think, I think is a, a new agent, joining a team or jo if you had a choice between going individual or going with a team, I mean, the, the success rate is a lot higher if you go with a team. I think the failure rate is like 87% of agents fail in their first year. That's right. And it's going to be really high now because, I mean, w when I first started, you know, I don't want to date myself, but you had a book on, the, on your desk and it basically said to you, this is what was on the market. Or there was one computer on the first floor and five agents waiting for the computer and the MLS would crash and it was just, it was a mess. So, uh, and you, you know, somebody showed you how to write up an offer form and fill out listing paperwork and there you are, you were ready to go. Mm -hmm. Now you have to use, learn how to use a, a CRM program that keeps track of your customer data, database. And if you don't have a CRM program, you're losing a lot of money and it's, mm -hmm. it's good to keep track of it from the very beginning. How do you use dot loop? How do you lose uh, Dropbox? You know, you've got uh, electronic signatures, you've got sky slope, you know, you've got the multiple listing service. Then you go into like, you know, how do you write up an offer? And you know, uh, now a lot of agents now are, are like used to this market that happened the last two or three years. Now we're starting to revert back a little bit to, a more skill-based market mm -hmm. um, of, of, of several years ago. So, you know, if you were a single agent and then all of a sudden you've been working just in this market and you had no training, I, I can't even imagine going into a skill-based market and like, you know, what am I doing? You would, you would totally. still try to do the same old thing. Yeah. You know? And imagine you walk into the office and it's not that agents across Massachusetts don't want to help you. But if you're a single agent, you're sitting next to a single agent, the reality is, is, is they have to get their work done too. Right. And, and, you know, how much handholding can they do? And that can be the challenge. Right. I, I mean, if I, I think if I had to start out brand new again, I would definitely uh, join a team. Um, I would be kind of fussy who I would go with for a team, to be honest with you, because teams run all differently. Um you know, I've had some people interview with me and they're like, you know, you run, everybody runs different. All these teams run all different. Yes. I mean, we do, but I think, you know, besides just the commission split, you really have to look at what that team offers because, mm -hmm. you know, you know, you can have a high commission split, but if, if you're not getting any training, if you're not getting any leads, if you're not getting any help at all, you know, zero times zero is zero, right. you know, so it's, it, it, you know, there's, there's, you got to really look at what the value is that that team is, is bringing if you're a new team member. Right. So it's almost a red flag. I think if I meet with someone and they say, what's my split or over the phone, right what's the my back, split? Yeah. And, and I get a sense that they might've either been scarred by another situation where they were poached on by a team leader um, yep. or they just need to be educated. You know, like, like you said, like it, what's a 50% 50% split versus an 80% split. Like you said, if you're not closing anything on the 80, it doesn't matter. And if we're doubling up on the 50, 
every, you know, every single month you're closing one or two, what difference does it make? Right. Well, all it matters is what's going in your checkbook. I mean, it mm-hmm. doesn't matter how high a split is. And I think that you have a lot of team leaders that are not good sharers. Mm-hmm. You know, they, they're like, you know, it's more like, you know, pick up my laundry today and, you know, go do this and that and, you know, and, and just cover the stuff that I don't want to cover where, you know, I think you and I are both a little bit, you know, different as far as that's concerned. We're into training a lot more. I think we're fair with our team. Um, and I think, you know, I'm more of like a divide and conquer type of person. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, like I, I would rather, um, instead of trying to take everything on myself and not do a good job because I can only handle so much, divide it between who I think would be a good fit. And then everybody's happy and, and, and the client's happy and it seems to be much better, you know? Yeah, definitely. And and kind of circling back to when you started your team, why did you start a team? Because everybody has a different story on that. And I'll tell you mine after, but I'd love to hear yours. So, all right. So I first, my first hire was going to be an admin. And this was after the kids got out of college because they were soaking me dry with commission. Okay. It was the recession. I had no money. I mean, I was working eight days a week, flipping the signs and everything. I was constantly getting yelled at because I couldn't, no matter how many days a week I worked, which was at least seven, that I could never move fast enough. Mm -hmm. So I decided when, when the kids get out of college and I had a couple of dollars, what I would do is I would hire an assistant. And, um, that's another thing too, is finding the right assistant is I think very difficult. So what you're trying to do is you're trying to sell, and then you're training this assistant at the same time. Mm-hmm. And it, it's just, it's a lot. And a lot of times assistants really want to be agents. So you have assistant for an assistant for a short time, and then you turn around and they want to be an agent. Mm-hmm. And then you've wasted all that time training them. So um, there was a huge learning curve when I first started a team. And then I really started bringing on like my first buyer's agent because I said to myself, you know, this is this is kind of crazy. I'm getting all these leads on the listings that I have, all these buyers, and I can only follow up once. And this is not, I'm missing a lot of leads. And this is not great for my sellers. I should, you know, be able to follow up a lot more. And I just didn't have time because there was only seven days in the week. So I said, you know what, this is going to be a great opportunity for another person, another agent, and it would be better for my sellers, and it would be better for me so I could feel like I could do a better job. Mm-hmm. So I, I started with Shannon and, Jane, and Gina, and they came on board. And it was great because they could handle the open houses for me so I could take a little bit of a breather. And then when they would finish the open houses, they would give me and my admin all the buyers that were working with agents that they didn't want because they were already with another agent. And I was glad to get them because I just wanted to sell the house. Mm-hmm. I didn't care who was selling it. Right. And then they, they would follow up with all the people that um, did not have agents. So there was an opportunity for them to get more buyers. So it really worked out well. I wanted a little bit more balance in my life. You know, I couldn't work eight days a week. Um, and it, it, it proved out to be really good for Shannon and, and, and Gina. It, sh- it proved out to be really good for me at that time. And, um, yeah, it's just kind of grown from there. Nice. Yeah. And I think that's, that's kind of a common story with mine is I, I, I had, well, I, I knew in my head, I was like, Oh, I don't want to run a team. I'm just going to kind of do my own thing. And, and then I started to get dragged through the mud on the weekends. I was doing an open oh. house, like 11 to one, one to three. And then a seller was unhappy because they felt like, well, I wanted to do a Saturday open house. So if I ever had three listings at the same time, it was a oh. disaster and it right. was more of a necessity for me. To, yeah, to it, start one. yeah, it just got to a point that th- there was no way that you could handle all that and really, really do it well. Exactly. And I think that that's, that's some of the thing when I think when uh, a, a client calls and, you know, we, we thought you, we were getting you. I mean, I think sometimes, you know, if they have an agent that's been extremely well trained and that's what we try to do, match the person, the people that we assign they have to be a good fit for the client. That's mm-hmm. that's the first priority. They have to be a good fit. And then they get all the support that we can provide behind. So actually, you know, 
all that agent is doing is focusing on what that, that seller or buyer needs. They're not focusing on all the social media and, and the postcards and flipping signs and, and all this other stuff, you know? Yep. So it really is an advantage for both the agent and the client. It is. It is. Now, I heard a funny quote, and I want to see how you react to this um, since you've done both, and so have I. Um, running a team and selling real estate is similar to – uh, riding a bike and climbing a tree, meaning they don't have any correlation between the two. So some people will say, well, I, I'm a good agent. So now I will start my team and I will be a good team leader. So riding a bike and climbing a tree, do you think that they're that different? No. I, well, I think, um, first of all, I never wanted to run a team when William Ravis office it, offered it. I never wanted to run a team because I used to manage the liquor store and I hated managing people, <laughs> hated managing people. So I found out that, you know, the people that I'm managing are a different caliber of person than I was used to. They're very professional. They, you know, they, they're, they're, they're great to work with. So um, I, I think you have to, in order to be, in my opinion, a good team lead, you have to be in the trenches with those agents. You have to know what they're going through. Mm -hmm. You have to, there's so much emotion in real estate that I don't really think you can appreciate what a team member does unless you've been in those trenches with them. So that's my opinion. It's more than just managing. I mean, like, you know, it's, it's very, very emotional for clients, and sometimes they don't always behave that way. So if, if all you did was manage and you had never gone in there and really sold, you, would, you wouldn't understand that connection. True. You wouldn't, good, good you wouldn't point. see that. Yeah, it's a good point. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If you haven't made hundreds of phone calls and you haven't been screamed at by a, a, an irate agent, we'll say, an irate agent yeah. that thinks it's your fault and – Yep. You know, things like that. You're right. It's a good point. You, you you wouldn't be able to relate to that. Right. And then, you know, these agents also want a lot of training. So how are you supposed to know how to train? I mean, what are you supposed to do, pick up a book? You know, you're not going to pick up a book that's going to show it, teach you everybody's emotion or, you know, 20 some odd years of experience. I mean, I, I, that's why, like, I'm really afraid sometimes if I pull off the streets a, a lot that I, that I won't. I don't want to lose touch of what's going on, mm -hmm. you know? So I kind of like having my finger in um, a little bit of street. I like to be in contact with the, uh, the girls all the time. So they, I know what's going on. Like, you know, if I'm just, I was handling just the list side for a long time, what's going on in the buy side, what are the buyers feeling, right. you know, things like that. So, yeah, no, I think you have to, I think in order to be a good team lead, I think you have to um, know how to ride the bike and climb the tree. Yeah, no, I would I would agree. And uh, the yeah. skill sets are very different, but it's good to have that combination that you can't just hire a manager to manage your team while you, you know, go do listings or whatnot. You do need to, to kind of be in the trenches, as you said. Yeah, I, I, I think so. And, I, you know, I am kind of fussy with, with the agents that I hire. They have to be motivated. I, I want, you know, motivated people that want to work. You know, this is not some... Uh, job we you know you just get dressed up and show up and you know not produce and you know i mean i like people that are gonna do a good job for the clients i want good reviews i want i want everybody to be happy and i, I want the agents to make a lot of money too yeah and yeah so i i think but i definitely think um there's no way unless you did this that you could really thoroughly understand everything the agent needs and everything the client needs yeah, I agree. And I know that you have you have real estate coaches, as do I. And, and one of the mm. things I value most of about them is is what they have done in the past or continue to do. You know, I mean, looking back, I've been doing this 26 years now. There's a few things that I'm glad I did and some things I would do differently. So one of the things I'm glad I did was I'm glad I always took care of my health because it's a marathon. This mm -hmm. business is a marathon. And then the second thing, if I had to do it better, but the opportunity wasn't there when I first started, is I would have kept better track of my database. Mm -hmm. Now we have these CRM programs where you can put everybody in. You can keep track of everything that's going on. And so the newer agents, I think, are very, very lucky that they have this software that we didn't have. Mm -hmm. And then the third thing is I would have started coaching with people more experienced 
a lot younger. Yeah. I would have yep. definitely done. A hundred percent. And on the coaching note, I remember the first time I, I interviewed coaches about five years ago and I saw the pricing and I thought, this is insane that I'm going to pay this amount of money. But I also went to college. And if you think any sort of real education is free, you're naive. And that was, I'll be honest. I mean, five years ago, that's when my business went from good to exponential because of right. these fabulous coaches that I had. Right. And I think what happens sometimes is I think I see like agents that have been in the business a long time and they're like, Oh, you know, I don't need coaching. I've been doing it this way. No, 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 no. This business changes all the time. I, I, I always think you can get better at your craft. So, I mean, I, I mean, I would have done if I if those damn kids were in college sucking me dry. I mean, I would I probably would have been coaching a lot earlier. <laughs> it's all the kids' fault. It is a kids' fault. <laughs> I hope they watch this, but you know, in its in its entirety, you know. They know it. <laughs> yeah, they do. They do. But it is it is money well spent, and it's and it's a cool thing because we you can switch coaches after a while, and um, you know, they it's not just accountability. You know, it's these things are on the cutting edge and you better, you better be ready for them because they're coming, you know, and how Absolutely. to use them. Right. So like, so, you know, my agents that are on the team, they have an opportunity to uh, train. They have a, we have a mastermind on uh, Tuesdays. We, we, we get together with the coach that I've hired and I'm sitting here and I'm like, wow, these agents that have only been in the business two or three years, how many of them know how to negotiate home inspections? Right. Okay. Uh, uh, they don't know how to negotiate a lot of conflicts. Mm -hmm. Okay. Like the art of trying to get the seller the most money. What questions do you ask? And if it was reversed, if you're the buyer's agent, what questions to ask the listing agent? Um, you know, things like that. I mean, it's just, it's, I think coaching is so important. So I, I think sometimes what happens is when, when uh, a seller or a buyer looks at an agent that's just not, you know, just like just picks any agent and mm -hmm. is not really skilled. I think they're leaving a lot of money on the table. I agree. I agree. And I was, I went to, I've been to listing uh, appointments like you and it feels like, geez, that, you know, 15 minutes and it's over and they signed and they're good to go and they made their decision and they're happy mm -hmm. with it. And then you go to the ones where I went to one last Friday and I, and I felt like I really earned, I earned this <laughs> listing because um, the mother-in-law and she was a, a great to talk to, but she came ready. Like I was on the stand and she was the district attorney and she was going to fire questions and yeah. the coaching can prep you for that, right? These different yeah. simulations where you're like, all right, we're going to, we will, we'll say quote unquote role play. And then, you know, agents are like, oh God, no, <laughs> you know, but it's cause they don't know what's coming and it's kind of an exciting thing to do. Right. I think that's some of the stuff that we're going to even work on even heavier um, in, in uh, the later um, fall uh, winter market. We're, we're putting together a lot of new stuff. So we're going to really up our training game quite a bit. Um, and, and I'm excited about that. And even for the more experienced agents, we're going to start role playing with them a little bit more just uh, to make it um, just a little bit easier for them. And I think, you know, as a single agent, I think you lose a lot of that. I mean, the companies do a good job, but it's hard for a, a company to take on and have that really personal touch. I think especially with a new agent, mm -hmm. a new agent takes a lot of training, a lot of training. Definitely. And, and if you're walking into the office and you don't feel like you have that support, you know, by month 12, month 13, like you said, 87% are out. Right. You right. Know, I don't think there's a higher percentage for any other job that I can think of. I mean, that's pretty high. Yeah, because, it, it, you know, when you think about it, it really kind of looks easy. Like, you know, people think we just open doors and sell this pretty house. And, 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 and you know, it, it's a lot more than that. It, take, it takes a lot more skill. Um, you know, what, what, what I think of now at this point in my career, the expenses are higher than they've ever been. Mm -hmm. I mean, I see my credit card bills come in every mm -hmm. month and, and I share them with the admin so they keep me in budget. <laughs> uh, we did buy that billboard for, at that charity event, though. It was a good, good. deal. So you've you've the... earned it. You've earned it. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so, but we go over those and it, it's crazy. The expenses that now 
um, I think companies take on expenses, but I think the individual agents have had to take on a lot more expenses now than I remember when I first started. You know, my yep. credit card bills probably run probably around twenty twenty five thousand right a month. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And that, I mean, and, it, and you do like you do, uh, you have an elite marketing plan. You're obviously everywhere and you've done the billboards and the TV commercials and you know, it's, mm -hmm. it's, it's what you need to do if you want to be in that upper tier and for a single agent, that is very, very difficult to compete with. It, it It's, it's hard, but I, I think as an individual agent, I think uh, a lot of times if, if they go up against like uh, a team as far as a listing presentation or something like that, they'll say, you know, it's going to be just me in touch. You're not going to be in touch with five different people, things like that. But it, it's almost impossible, I think, to keep up uh, with the level of service that a team can provide in comparison to an individual agent. And I think, you know, coming on as a new agent, you know, there's some people that, you know, have been out on the market a little while and they want to they want to go on as an individual agent and work with a company. And I, I think that's great. You know, there's we, we you know, we've got some great stuff going on at William Ravis that, that they offer. But I think especially for um, it's even experienced agents that want that collaboration, those, that ideas that don't want to do everything themselves uh, and, and brand new agents, especially. I think you can't beat a team. I love the team concept. I love working with the team. Yeah, me too. It's 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 a fantastic thing. And I'll give you just an example. This this weekend we have we have two four hour open houses. We're doing very very long open houses to try to get as many people in as possible, so they don't feel as though they didn't have an opportunity. But you know, agents want to 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 do the open houses so they can pick up buyers and clients and. And four of the agents are going to be covering two hours each, you know, and that used to be me. That means eight hours gone. And you know, it's more than eight because you're loading up the signs. And I even yep. now have contracted out. I have a, a, a student that just graduated from Lowell Catholic and I'm friends with his mom and he puts out 15 open house signs for each open That's house, great. you know, and you know what that's, that's like, you put, you put 15 oh. open house signs out. You need to go shower. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, I know. Yeah. I know. <laughs> and and God forbid that you don't you, you don't get the you know you pick up the last sign there, right? And then somebody wants to see the house, and you get you you know you got to drive back. I know that's that's a lot. Yeah, we we do um, open houses. They the the girls have been doing Thursday, Saturday, and Sundays. Nice. You know, it's and it's nice that they can rotate those around and stuff like that. And you know, I just I just saw it especially yesterday. I mean, th there's no way if I was an individual agent that I could focus on those offers and those negotiations, especially with the problems we were having with Microsoft, it wasn't just what Ravis, it was all over the place. Right. Uh, yeah. Think yeah. about the phone calls you get when an offer deadline comes in the phone, the phone text and email is, is oh, over the top, you know, is, and imagine now you have to, you have to go in and like you said, you have an ISA that's making hundreds of calls. So that might be a day that's good for your agent. This is look, I'm focusing on my offer deadline and I have the office support. So I don't feel like I'm not prospecting today because I'm tied up right. doing this. Right. Right. And, and I think um, the fact that like we kind of break up the buyers from the open houses and everybody gets followed up with, you know, if you're an individual agent, I mean, that, that can be exhausting. If, let's say you have 30, 40 people go through your open house as an individual person, that's hard to just follow up with all those people, opposed to when you're a team, you know, you can get everybody followed up with and, and, and the seller gets better service and the buyer, you know, gets told, yes, there's an offer that's come in, things like that. So, it, you know, it, it works out much, much better. The thing I really like is, so for example, we had a, a meeting and I'm like, all right, why should they hire us as a, a buyer's agent? And it's not just me thinking of everything. It's everybody collaborating, hand it off to the admin, make a nice, neat list, go over the list again as a team. And I just love all that. I love all that collaboration. Yeah. You know? And it's good because you have, you have a group that's been uh, around for a while, a lot of those core people, and they probably feel comfortable you know, sharing all these different ideas. And, and occasionally yeah, somebody from another brokerage that brings in another – you know, another element to that. 
Yeah. Yeah. It really works out well. Yeah. Yeah. And it's fun because I'll, I'll, I'll hear something and say, geez, it seemed like common sense, but I didn't, you know, I had no idea. Didn't even think of it. Right. Exactly. And, you know, like, um, we have we we have a seller's guide that you know I oh my god I think it put me it took me two months to put together several years ago and I had Chris Doherty's sister who's an English teacher look over all the <laughs> punctuation and grammar and, yeah. and the whole thing and then Leah said to me last year Jimmy that book's looking a little dated I'm like what, what's wrong with that <laughs> <laughs> and then she said well what about a look like this and I'm like oh okay that that's a a nicer look, a cleaner look, a more modern look, and you don't need all this stuff. Let's let's just go and and so we we kind of met together as a team, went over everything, and came up with a kind of new, more modern look. Yeah. And it didn't take me two months to put together. It was right. kind of nice. That is nice. <laughs> it, yeah. It's like it's almost like when you put the brand new kitchen in and it has the brown edges on it. Remember those with the white? There was like a white yes. cabinet face with the brown edges, and 30 years later, the seller says, "We just put this in." <laughs> <laughs> It's very similar. You get used to what you're used to, you know, because right. I'll look at some old stuff that I did years ago and it was probably fine at the time, but now it's just, it's just not. Right. And when you've got somebody that's much younger looking at it, mm -hmm. you know, it's just, it, it, it it's, it's kind of good. Like we, um, what I love is, um, you know, I'm teaching them, but they're also teaching me as, as we're going through this. And I think, I think I really enjoy that. You know? Yeah, and I'm sure they value that. I know that on we do our trainings on Thursdays uh, via Zoom, and yeah. um, I'll send occasionally. You know, I'll have what I'm going to do, and we're going to go over it. But I'll ask them, "What do you want to go over? What's mm -hmm. important to you?" Kind of like what you said, what you do on Wednesdays. Um, yeah. You know, but it gives us some time to to prep what what those things are, and they're all different, um, all different kinds of things. You know, uh, a lot of it's tech. They like the tech stuff, and I and I do too as long as it's not too, uh, you know, too elaborate. Yeah, we're going in, what we're working on now is um, we're, um, we're, we're working on this new admin that just started with us. She was amazed how organized we were. Okay. And, and to me, I'm like never organized enough. You know, I'm always picking something apart. You know, it's not, not good enough. And so now what we're doing is we're, tra we're, we're really taking our training program and we're saying, okay, Adam is doing this and I'm doing this and Christine is doing this and really trying to line it up. So um, when, when we have a new agent come on board, we've got, you know, this is what happens before you even walk in the door. Okay, mm -hmm. this is what we need from you. This is what happens week one, week two. And then there's a syllabus of what we're going to kind of go over. And what's good about, it's it's not real time constraints. So for example, if he if Adam has got uh, a couple of people and they're not really getting what they're supposed to get, then instead of making being one week training, maybe he'll go a week and a half or something mm -hmm. like that. Mm -hmm. So we're we're really going through that now and um, fine tuning that for new agents because I think that that's what agents are looking for now. They're looking for they're not just looking for you know I want a high split. They're looking for how do I do this job? It's difficult training, uh, things like that. I think, and I think if they could train well, they can make a lot more money. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. And, and we, and I know you provide leads as do I, and, and, and we all know the reality of online leads and what they can and can't be. But I also yeah. have really emphasized with this group is you need you. And I know it's a cliche, but the idea of sphere, we go, we are going after our sphere, friends and family, in, in all different angles in all different ways so that they would be excited to, to um, recommend us instead of, you know, the typical, here's my postcards for 12 months. That's right. not good enough, you know? And I think that that's part of the training, you know, like it's not, it's not just like, well, we provide leads or high splits and some of the, uh, you know, things that people all say, it's almost like just this tree that branches off into all these different things. Right. Like these are all the different marketing pillars that you can use. Like pick four out of these. What do you feel comfortable using? And then teaching them how to how to do that. Right. Is there one yeah. of those pillars that that your team uh, is not interested in doing? And I will tell you the one that my team is not interested in doing. And to be honest with you, neither am I, because I don't like when people do this to me. But door knock, door knock. <laughs> door I, knew, knock. I knew you were going to say that door knocking. <laughs> so I, I have a phobia. 
<laughs> with door knocking. And let me tell you what it is. I've actually told the girls. So I was selling blueberry muffins on Long Beach and Gloucester when I was a kid. And I went up to the, the, the wall on Rockport, okay? Mm-hmm. And um, I was selling my blueberry muffins and I was by myself. And um, this gentleman came to the door and he, all he had on was his underwear. So I have been a little bit nervous about, and I know you're supposed to door knock, but I've always been nervous about door knocking ever since that blueberry muffin incident in Rockport. <laughs> well, you, I can assure you, you are never door knocking. That is a scar. That is a scarring um, story, and I, I think I'm actually scarred from it just thinking about it. So. <laughs> yeah, I was just a little kid, you know. I think I was probably like 12 years old, and the guy showed up with his underwear at the door. He Goodness. must have had several cocktails or something. I know? hope so. <laughs> 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 All right. On that note, uh, that was a great that was a great podcast, Debbie. Thank you for sharing uh, your insight. That was really good. And uh, and how yeah, can people wish, reach you? Well, well, they can reach me on wherehomesgetsold dot com or my phone number is nine seven eight seven seven one nine nine zero nine. I would love to hear what people want to talk about, yep. what they'd like to know from us. Yeah, I love that. And I, you can find me at wittysellshomes dot com and. Um, my cell phone number is 978-273-0099. So definitely text us or reach out to us because I agree with Debbie. We want to hear from you. Otherwise, we have thousands of topics. We will just keep cranking these out. But but let's hear what you're interested in. All right, Debbie, have a good one. It was great to see you again.